This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Here we are again. Number one bait shop in the Baton Rouge jail, Shapiro Bait and Tackle on Sagan Lane. Don, it, it was a rough week, we, but nowhere near what we thought it was going to be. Yeah, this is going to so. be our post-Nate program, and uh, luckily Nate was not what he was all cracked up to be, and very thankfully so. We really dodged a bullet. Going to be some problems with it, but also some benefits associated with it. We'll talk to you a little bit about that. We do an fishing report. I'm telling you, it stirred up some bait fish down in around Lake Bourne and Lake Pontchartrain. So, what we've been waiting on in World Series trout might come a little bit earlier. So, Don, uh, we got a lot of news, a lot of things that we've done before. When you're talking about the, the Nate post Nate report, uh, I've talked to the marinas from. Grand Isle all the way to the North Shore, and uh, everyone seems to be pretty happy. So as uh, far as the fishing report, some of them come in already as early as Sunday after the storm. So we have that in the fishing report. I got some deer pitches. I got some squirrel pitches. And we got some motel pitches that come in late. So. Speaking about hunting and the deer hunting pictures that were sent in, we're going to revisit an interview we had with Jonathan Bordelon with the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries about the new cervid or whitetail deer importation regulations. If you're going to be deer hunting and you're going to be crossing in the Louisiana state lines with out-of-state deer, you need to be up on those regulations because they will be enforced. In fact, they're enforced now. So, we also got a legend in the wildlife and fisheries there in this state, Kel McKinnis, talking about retiring and and we, we got Sam O'Barrow, one that's been with us for a long time and been on the show. Uh, he's coming on the first of the year, so we got an interview with him. Uh, also got our H&H &H tournament report, what little fishing report information we could gather, because a lot of people did not fish last weekend. They were hunkered down with the approach of Nate. So we'll do some little bit of prognosticating about what could happen there. And also uh, take a little visit back to a trip you made early in Missouri, too, and get some some right. really good, interesting information there. So we got a full show for you. Stay tuned. We're at Superior Bait and Tackle in Baton Rouge, where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and today we have a special guest joining us, Mr. Kel McGinnis. And Kel, it's great to have you here with us. Pleasure Thanks. being with you again, Don. Well, what are you going to do with all this free time now that you're leaving Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation? Well, I, I hope to get out from behind that desk and out in the field. <laughs> well, you've done a great job over the past decade, and for folks not familiar with it, Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation is one of those organizations that I would consider them kind of low profile, but very, very important. Well, we, we've done our best uh, to try to 
bring up the profile with it with some of the programs and projects that we've been involved in. But you're correct. Uh, we're not a household name, and we, with, with Sam coming on board, as much as he enjoys being in front of the camera, I think that uh, we'll get a little bit more exposure and hopefully get the benefit of, of stuff. Now, he's not project. quite as shy as you were, but you've never <laughs> been shy before as being out there working. You know the foundation, I read the article in the paper Sunday, but Joe, I didn't know. There's, there's 40 something states that have these same foundations that. They're set up, and some of them were involved before Louisiana got involved, but, but most of them have come on board since that we have. We've been around since uh, actually 1995. Uh, I didn't get involved until 2006, but it's, uh, it's a growing thing as, as departments recognize that they need the additional support. Uh, these foundations have been critical to help them out. You, you were interim secretary of wildlife and fisheries for a while, and then you've been there. What part did that play in you knowing what goes on and where the money comes from to make you all start this kind of foundation? Well, it, it started uh, actually a few years after I left uh, being serving as secretary of the department. And uh, we realized at the time that it was something that was needed. It was just getting the impetus to, to get it started. And uh, the founders, they, they got involved. Uh, Joe Herring was involved as the secretary. And as he was leaving, uh, the financial situation got more and more strained. And they realized this was something they really needed to to get in place. Uh, Y'all probably will save you right now the way the budget crisis has been in the state of Louisiana. So, Actually, you know, the department doesn't get any money from the general fund. Right. And as a result, uh, they survive on, on the different fees and licenses and uh, stuff through the department. They get the, the federal funds back from the license sales and so forth and the sporting goods sales. But uh, the, the cost of operating the department continues to grow, and those dollars don't necessarily keep pace. Well, you know, the foundation was instrumental in a lot of programs that the state of Louisiana can be very proud of. What is the one that you would consider the most significant accomplishment during your time? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a bunch <laughs> of them. Uh, you know, watching the uh, department uh, with their outreach programs, get involved in the youth recruitment and education are, are critical to the future of the department. We, we've done some real big deals like land acquisition and habitat restoration around the state. But I think really the most critical one is getting the youth involved and in, in bringing them in and getting them excited about being outdoors. Fishing, fishing days, hunting and fishing days. Every time I've been to one, you've been there, I've been there. Every conservation group banquets from Wild Turkey Federation, Delta Waterfowl, Ducks Unlimited, you, you've been always been there. And Sam has been hung on CCA and a bunch of things like that. I, I think we made a wise choice because uh, his energy is unlimited. He's got a great energy and we're excited about Sam. Uh, he's been on board since June. Uh, he's excited about the opportunity as he referred to it as his dream job. I, mm. I know it was mine, so uh, I hope he really appreciates the opportunity that there for him and that uh, we look forward to, to watching him uh, grow, bringing in that CCA crowd on top of what we've been doing. How about you bring us some field reports that when you go out I'll there I'll be happy to do stuff. that. I, I hope to have some field reports to report on. Well, let me th personally thank you, and especially Diane, thank you for all of you contributed to Paradise, Louisiana, the last 15 years, and have you helped us. And uh, we appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you, Gary. Good appreciate luck. it. And hopefully you'll get the support from the people here, and Sam will get some help too on his he new will. challenge. He'll, he'll be able to bring that new cross section in and add to, to what we've been able to pitch. As you say, uh, I probably am a member of every conservation organization that you can name, and maybe one or two that you don't know about. Probably. So it's, uh, it's been a thrill for me, and I'm, I'm really excited about where we are and the opportunities there. In well, we've got a big night coming up Thursday night if you're watching this on Wednesday. Well, Thursday, you can get down there to the Live Oak Ravens because uh, that's a big deal and some great food. Well, we have great food. It's, it's a great setup, an extremely nice venue, and uh, we're proud to be there. Uh, it's, uh, if you want to go online, it's wildnight.org is where you can get your tickets, the easiest way to get into it. And the foundation website for people that want to learn more about the website is lawff.org. Either one will work, but the wild night one is, is easier for tickets. 
I'm right. sure you take donations too from all these big businesses. Anything of us, buddy, want to? We'd love to them. have people jump in and, and join us as sponsors. Picked up a new one this morning. So. Very good. All right, we'll be right back with more after this. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pods, moving in storage, solved. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit laWff.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit laWff. Org. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Gary, post-NATE coverage is a whole lot better than doing pre-NATE coverage. I get called into doing some emergency operation broadcasting, and I got to tell you, I'm really shocked and amazed at the attitude of some people who actually are upset and complaining to meteorologists and to different people with organizations who made closures and postponements and cancellations looking out for their best interests, and then these people say, well, there wasn't nothing to it. Why did you make us go through that? Yeah, like yeah. hollering wolf. You know, they say, well, you're going to holler wolf next time, we're going to be more damaged. I'd rather take a chance because i tell you what, I did a lot of praying, thinking about my camp sure. in Slidell. You know, the water was under it all week, so if they're going to get a seven-foot surge, you know, I knew we were going to get in my camp so I'm so high off the water, but I thought about all my neighbors and all the, the landings that we go to in the North Shore, you know, from the rigor leaves to, to, and I tell you, these people really got ready Friday and Saturday. They work a lot of times. They're not disappointed, you know, at Island Marina. The, the stewards, you know, they had all their captains. They were people pulling boat out. One I'm going to go with, Justin Bowes. He, you know, he, he's in Pachatula. He pulled it over there. We fishing Wednesday. We ready to go. All them landings are ready to go right now. So on the North Shore, they didn't get what they were supposed to. They got live bait. In fact, there's bait everywhere right now. And in uh, and the fishing report, I'm going I'm to give you a little bit more on the North Shore and Lake Bourne. Now, Grand Isle, they got a lot of water early all yeah. week. But Buggy and them sent me some video of the campsites and over there in the pavilion, it was water all under there. Didn't get in the store. Same thing with Butch at Sand Dollar. Butch said they always get something in the store. They raised everything up. He was tickled pink. He didn't mind at all going back there. They're all open. They all got live bait, except for shrimp. The shrimpers are going out today. This is Monday. The shrimpers going out, so it won't be long. In the middle of the week, you're going to have shrimp at, at, at the two locations in Grand Isle. Uh, especially the feet. Now, we heard their evacuation. I talked to Craig Mathern. Again, Craig said uh, it got right at the dock. They lifted their boats. Some of them got their boats out. They back and open right away and going. And by the way, catching fish. In the fishing report we got before the storm, there was a lot of fish being caught, trout and, and redfish in the Lafitte area. Uh, the Venice Marina, uh, he sent me some pictures from the deck, sent me some video, and he was showing it. And this was after the fact. He says, they wide open. Mike, Mike Butler said, they wide open. They're having no trouble. Everything is clean. There's no trash in the parking lots. And he, he says, and they're definitely going to have live bait. Now, you talk to Ryan. You tell me what, he, what he's saying. 
Well, his big concern was going to be the vegetation damage from the storm surge with salt water affecting the duck. Uh, doesn't really going to have much impact other than a positive impact like everybody else is predicting with the fishing. Uh, moving further to the east, uh, Shell Beach, Campos Marina, uh, they got everything. Over there, they've got that protection. They call it the Great Wall of Chalmette. Right. And what happens is when you get a storm threat, everybody gets their boats, their campers, their trailers, and all they do is drive them through to the other side of that, that gate. They close that wall on the highway there, and everybody's protected on high ground. It's just going to be a matter of getting them that back down there. But as far as damage to infrastructure, there is none there, not in Hopedale, not in Delacro. Uh, there was virtually nothing on the west side of Nate. It, it affected the Gulf Coast of Mississippi somewhat, but as far as Louisiana, we're just as good as the day before. Yeah, that neighbors in Mississippi, some of those people that got marinas and bait, they had a lot of trash that was blown up over the road, but they're already working and cleaning the road, the Highway 90. Everything they're doing over there is get back. That surge did get them pretty good because of the the action of the wind in some of them islands, even Alabama, you know, certain areas like that. So all y'all guys that got camps down there at Orange Beach and stuff like that, you know, we wish you the best. And uh, from what we hear, y'all going to be up and going too. All right. So that's just the report I got, Don. We come back and fish report. I got some good news from the mayor. Very good. Stay tuned for it. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. Welcome to the Paradise Louisiana news segment. A lot of people thought we were gonna have a fall red snapper season. When the numbers came in, according to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries calculations, we did not fill out our quota of red snapper for the year. Thought that there may be a chance to get some fall snapper season in state waters. Uh, some opposition showed up at the commission meeting and then CCA was opposed to it. Also the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership spokesperson Chris Macaluso. And the argument was, if in fact we do do this before we get the total numbers in from the entire Gulf, this could negatively impact next year's allocation. So rather than risk that for a few fish in the fall, they went on record as being opposed to it, and the commission uh, had a motion to go forward with it, and they backed off of it, so it does not appear. Now, things could change, but it appears we will not have a red snapper fall season in state Those water. people in the federal government, they look for any reason they can to needle us or push us back. They have done nothing yet to help us, you know. So I, I think it was, I was disappointed, but I, I think it was a while move. Those people that opposed it and say, let's wait, they, they, you know they got our interests in hand. Absolutely. They've been following it. So. I don't have a problem. Well, with the that. state of Alabama put out the word they are adamantly opposed to any type of a fall season because they don't want to risk anything that would impact the real busy part of their booking time, which is in the spring and the summer for small snapping off the Alabama coast. They sticking by their guns when they went for the, the regional management and put in their own accounting system similar to what we did here in Louisiana. They made a statement at that time is we're not going to go for a fall season and they're sticking with their guns so you, you got to give them credit for that. Uh, other news Gary, uh, if you're going to be going out 
there were some closures at the time we were recording this. The Marpar Swamp was put off limits to deer hunting. Uh, the gauge was somewhere around three foot and it's mandated when it reaches that high. It kind of puts those animals into a stress situation, consolidates them on higher ground, which really wouldn't constitute fair chase, so they close the season temporarily. But that could change between now and the weekend. So if you're planning on doing any hunting on any areas that you think might have been impacted by Hurricane Nate and the storm surge, you might want to check on Wildlife and Fisheries website before you do it. Uh, I agree with that. And the other, other reports we get of a lot of things that are coming up in the news right now. We got a lot of conservation groups are coming in and doing it. Uh, you know, we, uh, Ducks Unlimited got their, their big LSU banquet. It'll be mm -hmm. at the Parker Center. They'll be coming up November 1st. That's a Wednesday night. And that's a big crowd, and they'd be surprised how many going to people there. So I wanted to mention, don't want to forget y'all, is giving you a couple, few weeks in advance, November 1st, make a plan to go to DU Banquet right there at the Parker Center on the LSU campus. Yeah, so this is the season for Ducks Unlimited Banquets. I went to one last week. It was really well attended, and they've got some great bargains you can get there. Not as just far DU, as Delta Waterfowl, a lot of other sure. banquets are coming on right now. Most of your turkey in the conservation groups, they start coming up. CCA had their banquet mm -hmm. in Blackman on the west side, couldn't get there, but they tell me they had a tremendous crowd. Well, a lot of people were disappointed too in the Louisiana Wildfowl Carvers and Collectors Guild that was supposed to be held. We've been promoting it at the Castine Center. They made the wise decision to postpone it. Now they have to work with the center to get another rescheduled date. We'll let you know when that's gonna happen, but there were people that travel from all over the country coming to that and they were sadly disappointed, but in the interest of, of safety, it's the best way to go. You gotta do it. Yeah, well, that's where the search is supposed to come too. Last bit of news, if you're gonna be deer hunting again and you're gonna be going out of state, bringing deer back across Louisiana state lines, remember we have new regulations about the importation of white-tailed deer and other cervids. We're gonna take you back now to an interview we did earlier with Jonathan Bordelon explaining about what CWD is, chronic wasting disease, the possibility of its spread, and why this importation regulations will help stop that from getting into Louisiana. Man, but CWD is basically an acronym for chronic wasting disease. It's a neurological brain disease affecting cervids, in particular white-tailed deer. That's the species of concern here in Louisiana. One thing about the disease is it is 100% fatal. Uh, another big part of the disease is the fact that a live host isn't needed to transmit the disease the disease can actually manifest in the environment and the environment itself can be a source for infection. In Louisiana, we're fortunate in the fact that we haven't diagnosed the disease. Uh, we've tested over 8,000 deer in Louisiana since 2002, um, all of them being negative. Uh, right now, our testing is basically focused on what we consider high-risk animals. So those are animals with neurologic symptoms. In addition to that, animals in or adjacent to captive facilities, since many of those have come from states that have chronic wasting disease. And we also focus on road kills because you never really know if an animal was hit uh, just by happenstance or was it somewhat neurologic and unable to get out of the way. So that's basically where we're focusing our testing at this time. So Obviously the focus was to keep cervid carcasses from outside of Louisiana from coming into Louisiana. But it was, you know, we were quick to realize that you're going to have to have certain provisions or exceptions with that to allow hunters to return with at least the meat and potentially the parts that they could use to, uh, for taxidermy use. Uh, so some of the exceptions that are listed uh, do allow for deboned meat to come in. They also allow quarters as long as there's no head nor backbone attached. Um, meat that is cut and wrapped, that is okay also. Then the other parts uh, aren't specific to the meat, and those have to do with the taxidermy products. Um, that's the cape of the animal that can be possessed and brought into the state, as well as the antlers with a skull cap. Uh, however, what is not allowed would be the whole head or entire head intact. So that cape and that skull cap and antlers would have to be removed uh, before the hunter transported it into Louisiana. States, keep in mind that Louisiana will actually be the 38th state with the cervid carcass importation ban. So for many of these states, you mentioned Missouri, uh, you know, Arkansas, Illinois, they've had these bans in place for some time. And as a result of that, the industries in those states have somewhat adapted to preparing products for shipment. So many taxidermists in the states are already providing that service knowing that their clients or going to another state to have it 
for a final mounting or to their taxidermist of choice. So there certainly is, but that would require a hunter, um, you know, to do some homework on the front end and actually locate and find someone that would be willing to do that uh, for them in the event that they were lucky enough to harvest a trophy in that state. But that would be a great way to get that trophy back to Louisiana and the hands of a taxidermist that they have confidence in and allow that work to be done back home in Louisiana. The first thing I'll just show you some of the tools that we use here in our shop to make it easy. There are many different methods out there that many taxidermists use and prefer, but we'll show you the way we've been doing it for about 30 years. Uh, first thing is just a small tape measure, just to take a few measurements that are very helpful. Uh, not necessary, but it is helpful. Another thing is a my favorite tool, a sharp pocket knife. I like to use a scalpel with disposable blades. Uh, really sharp knives are better. Pocket knife, scalpel blades, whatever you're comfortable, whatever hunting knife you carry. Another thing we call it, it's just a hammer. We call it our caping hammer and screwdriver. Not necessary, but it does make it, make it a little bit easier to get around the antler burrs. So with that being said, uh, these are the basic tools. Once we have the skin caped off the head, then we like to use either a hand saw or a reciprocating saw. Just makes the cutting a little bit easier. Most people have these around the camp. Uh, if not, uh, you can use a hand saw, no problem. There are different methods of cutting. Our choice is the Y method, Y incision. The first thing you want to do is find the center of the antler burrs, right behind here, and we're going to cut a V right here, a V. You don't want to cut hair or, or you want to cut hide, so you want to get your scalpel or your knife right up underneath the hair, right in the center of the back of the antler burr, and you're going to first cut here. We're going to make a V here from one burr to the center of the head, and from the other burr under the hair to the center. You got your flap, there's our V. Now we're going to make our Y. We're going to make our incision straight down under the hair, under the skin without cutting hair. This is our Y incision. The next step is once you have your Y incision, you want to pay real close attention to earbuds, ear canals, antler burrs, eyes, tear ducts, and nose. Now you see the Y here, the cut. Then you're going to work this flap up. You're going to start following the bone here. Make sure you cut through that skin without cutting hair. Once you kill the uh, trophy or buck that you want to mount, the hard part's over. So take your time and don't get in a rush. Just This can be done by anyone who watches the video. The cleaner you get it now, the easier it is later, and it keeps the smell off. Here you have it, a properly caped deer off the skull for transportation, freezer space, ice chest, or uh, traveling across lines. There's information on our website, but obviously contacting the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries um, would be the probably the recommended step. There's a 1-800 number um, to contact the department. In addition to that, there's numbers within our hunting pamphlet and on the website for our Baton Rouge headquarters office as well as regional offices around the state. Any of those offices, uh, local offices, would be able to answer their questions um, as well as um, 
the folks here at headquarters. Hunters are, are great stewards of the resource, and because of that, for the, you know, hunters in general are going to have a concern for that resource and realizing the impacts or potential impacts of this disease on Louisiana's deer herd, we're somewhat hopeful that many folks will, will take voluntary steps to, to minimize the chance of transmission back home here in Louisiana. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express location. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Be Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome to the H and H Tournament Report, Gary. We got to go back a week. You got your pink back on. You were all set to go to the Grand Isle Ladies Rodeo. I know it's one of your favorites, and really one of the bigger tournaments in Grand Isle now at Bridgeside. Luckily, they've been able to reschedule it for this weekend. So if you were planning on going, or if you weren't planning on going, now you got an opportunity to go. That's right. Everything is ready to go. I hope I can go. I mean, I got some other commitments Saturday. I might maybe sneak down there Friday, but Saturday I got some other commitments. So I don't want to disappoint y'all say I'm going to be there. I hope it don't hurt their attendance right now because a lot of people plan their vacation around there, mm -hmm. but they didn't plan on Nate. So, so we, we make sure you know if you're watching this Thursday night, it starts Friday and Saturday. And both nights, don't forget that great party they got Saturday night. It's Two other there. tournaments, rodeos that were scheduled that have been postponed is going to be the Lake Pontchartrain First Crush Rodeo and they're looking at a November date. Also, Keith Lusher with the North Shore Bass Fishing Report not Tournament. Sure. That was postponed, but it's not been rescheduled. We'll fill you in on that one. Now, one that did go on was the Tito's Redfish Tournament that was held down at Delta Marina in Empire. It was scheduled to be a two-day tournament in the interest of safety. The timing was good. They saw the storm coming, but they had a window of opportunity last Friday to condense it down to a one-day tournament. It went off, and not bad, $20,000 cash prize money went to the winning team of Kirk Davis and Wayne Juno. Also, the K2 Cooler of the Year team uh, was won by Nikki Savoy, Paul Dufresne, and Sean O'Connell. They picked up a $5,000 check. So congratulations to Tito's for quick reacting and getting that tournament reduced. That's right. and getting he did a guy. Benny Sanchez did an unreal job, and he might be back with us, and we'll have more pictures and stuff coming up uh, in one of our later shows. So get them guys the credit. It ran great. You, I mean, they took this thing over, took the ball running. They always had over 100 boats. I don't know how many they had the other day, but uh, congratulations to Tito, and thank y'all. Thank you for letting us be a, a team member, too, for y'all. Don, we had, we had a couple other tournaments right now. Our, our friends over there at Louisiana Bass Nation, and Mr. Hoover, he might have come in second. He sent us some uh, some reports, and he sent a picture of state champion. It's Caleb Sumrall. Now, this is the Louisiana Bass Nation, Louisiana Bass Nation. He sent them pictures of them and, uh, and the team members, the winner and his family. So congratulations to those we had. Louisiana teams always place good up there in the Louisiana Bass Nation, and I want to thank Mr. Gene Hoover for sending me these pictures. Uh, the other big one, it went off fine and good, and they had it. Saturday at Calcasieu Point was the Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club, the Cajun Castaway. The results of first place were Ron Alamo. Second place was Derek Bushnell. Third place was Tim Bondenstein. I hope I said that right. And then uh, the Flander Calcutta was Tyler Bondenstein. The Leopard Redfish was uh, Butch Ridgewell. He had eight spots. So, so it had some good weights. It had a good turnout. There's another one that dies of storms that went on as planned. So I'm going to tell you what, that Lafayette Cajun 
the kayak club, they, they, they're doing a tremendous job too. And like you said, it's a, the biggest growing sport in, in fishing and watering them right now. And if you're thinking why your tournament or rodeo wasn't publicized or the results given, it's because we didn't get it. Please send it to us. We'd love to put it on our tournament report each week. Just send it simply to Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. Give us the details and try to give us at least three weeks or longer notice so we can give you enough time to help build the participation for you and then follow it up with the pictures and the results. We'll be right back with more. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. TV. We're doing one of our favorite things, something we've been doing all summer, and that's sight fishing redfish and skinny ponds off the marshes of the intercoastal. to the end of our sight fishing season and it's not because the red fishing is uh, goes on a decline it's nothing to do with that it's the fact that the trout fishing is about to accelerate water temperatures are gonna cool off and the trout are gonna start acting right and that's really our uh, number one thing that we target around here we're gonna get into fishing with the matrix minnow that's gonna be our future dockside episodes but we're still into that September time and what happens in September October, you get a lot of east, northeast, southeast winds until the cold fronts start coming down. The cold fronts is what blows the water out typically. So before the fronts happen, it's still kind of, it's warm out. The water just keeps coming in and it's driving good salty water into our estuary. And when you get that good salty water and the easterly winds, the water's going to rise. So duck ponds that we standardly catching redfish in throughout the summer and that's typically 12 to 18 inches deep if it's got a foot surge of water you know a foot on top of its normal height it's going to push the redfish back the redfish almost always like to be in that 12 12 inch 14 inch water depth especially when it comes to sight fishing and when you're fishing this snot grass this heavy vegetation so if the water comes up we're going to push in deeper into the marsh look for more flooded marsh situations and by doing that we might have to squeeze through some very skinny areas and it'll pop up into you know we might go through something really tight because we know it opens up into a nice skinny duck pond behind it and one of the great ways we find some of these ponds in these in these crazy areas that you can't even see it on some maps is we use our GPS all the time. We always have our standard mapping card in there. It shows me where some ponds are that I might not even know of. I might be going down a little ditch or around a corner and know and see that there's a pond over some marsh when I'm on my platform. I don't know how to get to it. So I go look on the card and it might show me the little trail to get in there. And that's really the name of the game with high water is forget about the big, large, deeper ponds and focus more on the flooded marsh, skinny, skinny water ponds that you can't typically get into because the water's not high enough. Well, all summer, it's been kind of tough. And just here the last six weeks, the red fishing's became very easy and the water's gotten really clean to where we, you know, we're catching plenty of them every time we go out. What happens is, the last few years is the Pearl River stays very high 
throughout the spring and summer and it causes too much grass in, in the duck ponds and the places that we like to fish. And for one, it could pull the oxygen out of the ponds. Two, the redfish do not like to swim through all that grass. Three, it's hard to float the grass. The trolling motor can't push through it and it just makes it a pain. But like I said, as the water levels come up this time of year, that salt water, it kills the grass to, and it kills a lot of that freshwater grass, leaving just enough grass to make it almost like a uh, aquarium like water it's like a sponge and it filters it just right you got just enough grass water gets gin clear and the, and the redfish really like it in there and you start seeing redfish and stingrays floating around everywhere and that's the situation that we've been getting here the last couple of weeks hey i'm mitch rotolo owner of rotolo's pizzeria our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients but rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza we have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Like a pro. Two big bedrooms that have uh, double queen size bunks. Uh, the middle story is uh, where they have the we have the kitchen and have uh, a big uh, great room. And uh, the upper level has two more bedrooms that will sleep uh, multiple people too. We have uh, an outdoor fireplace. That's probably one of the nicest features uh, that people like to enjoy is just sitting outside and enjoying a nice fire afterwards. And. Uh, and the peaceful lake. Yeah, uh, it's a little busy yet this time of year. The, we're right on the tail end of the tourist season where uh, the lake starts to die down. And, and then uh, when the leaves start to change, uh, the lake is beautiful to go for a fall run on. How many is the sleep again? Uh, 22 people is what we can squeeze in there. Yeah. Yeah. We offer, uh, with all of our hunts, a free guest to come stay with each hunter. Uh, it just really uh, gets a, a lot of youth involved and then spouses to, to get them into the, the hunting scene a little bit more too. So we, uh, we always offer a free guest to come with each uh, hunter that's uh, coming just to kind of uh, help uh, get other people involved.
you didn't recognize any of that habitat, that's because that was not Louisiana, that was Missouri, Gary. What was going on up there? But I, that's just part of the, your trip you make to the Oaks in Missouri. It's just a beautiful place. And that was the lodge that, we didn't stay in that lodge. That was the side of the lodge and the kids that are all raised around there, showing how much activity is. If you want to make a vacation, summertime would even be good to go over there. Lake of Ozarks, one of the most famous lakes. We got some pictures of the people there, the scenery, and uh, and by the way, Don, I promised that little girl she was going to be on TV, so, and that's the way it is. So. Well, and that was part of the hunt. That was to benefit some of the veterans that you made recently. And we're going back, too. Good deal. Speaking of hunting, we've got lots of hunting open now in Louisiana, deer hunting, small game season. We had some reports that there's plenty of squirrels in certain areas. That kind of coincides with the mass crop. Dove season is back reopened again, and we're not that far away from the waterfowl season and then goose and then the firearm seasons for deer. So check it out. Look on Wildlife and Fisheries website. Pick up one of the hunting regulations pamphlets. Make sure you keep in check with all the seasons that are opening and closing. Yeah, the deer season is always complicated to me. Chris will run them on the end of the screen. They're in the paper. They're, they're also in the website, like you said. Don, squirrel. It's going to be like a good deer. Everybody I talk to, Paige and her brother John McLean, who mm -hmm. Paige has been shot cameras, have been on our show before. She's a great bow hunter and bass fisherman. Uh, they send me some pictures from up home where they live, over in the central part of the state. Uh, Rick Valet and his brothers uh, had a great hunt. His brothers, Kerry and Mark. If you notice in these pictures, they were hunting in Palmetto, but you notice the three different species. They had fox squirrels, the big red fox squirrels. Mm -hmm. I didn't see no blaze face, but they had fox squirrels, they had gray squirrels, they had black squirrels, black fox squirrels, and the gray squirrels or cat squirrels, you see in those pictures. Uh, Bobby Black, we're going back to the, the deer hunting. Uh, Bobby Black sent me a picture on his brother's place up there in Madison Parish, a hunting parker with a big buck. Uh, then I seen a, another one came, Michael Gary. Michael Gary sends me, he calls himself G Mike. He sends me a lot of reports. He's Purple Heart, he's a veteran. He was a guest of the Gulf Coast uh, Veterans Association. They went to Big Rapids, Michigan. And uh, he, he, he called it Two, two Hats Ranch. He had 11 point, 210 pound deer. Congratulations, Mike, and thank you. Always stay in touch like you have been. Uh, Jax, how do you say that? Gassimi? Gassimi. Looks like Gassimi to me. Yeah, that's what look. His dad, Kavan, he wanted, he, little boy wanted a crossbow. He wanted to make a deer hunt for his birthday. So they were up in Mississippi, at Fayette, Mississippi. The opening day, he killed an eight point with Ooh, his crossbow. Ooh, happy birthday. They couldn't, <laughs> they had trouble finding it. They didn't find it the next day. So, but uh, there's the horns and there's his. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Jackson, keep those pictures coming in. I got, a, I got another teal hunt. They come in late. Uh, Kenyon Menard, you, you, you remember the Menard, you remember his sister that was the duck caller and everything in yeah, the beauty contest? Yeah, right. She is right now, she is a, a, is a representative for Cabela. She sent me some duck calling things, but I, I'll, I'll show you all that later. But Kenyon killed a, a bunch of teal down in the, in the around the areas around below uh, uh, Gate On. And then I got another picture that came in, uh, Paul Patty, and Jay Coverson, they went to Doug's in Gaydon. They had a pretty good hunt, like they did. But they had a lottery hunt at, at the White Lake management area. They had a guy named Perry. He said they have never seen in his life so many teal. They were just swarming. They were coming in and out. They had their limit. He sent a bunch of pictures. And uh, I want to thank both of y'all for doing that. And uh, congratulations. And keep sending reports. That's my, that's my hunting report. All right, now for the Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report. It's going to be tough to give you fishing reports because with the advent of Nate coming in a few days and those storm surge ahead of that, then everybody, you know, just kind of picking up and moving their boats to safety and, and taking care of other things. A lot of people did not fish, but there have been some early fishermen that got out right after the, the storm passed. And, Gary, so far the, it really looks good and the predictions are really good. Storm surges always push bait into the interior and it always has the predator fish that follow it. 
and you usually get excellent fishing following a storm surge. And at this time of the year, when we're waiting for the transition, this could be the thing that puts it over the top in places like Pontchartrain, uh, Hopedale, uh, Shell Beach, where you've had trout on the outside, but now they're going to start moving into interior marshes and looking good. Leeville, same way. You know, the waters will come up. People fishing off the road going to be hot as you can be. Mm -hmm. After these storms like that, the shrimp moving. I remember going to catch a cast net and filling a 48 quart up with, with shrimp right off the bank over there in Leeville. But the, the biggest report, I mean, it just came in is, uh, is at the Island Marina, the, all the captains over there. Uh, Andy Jones went out, Captain Andy Jones mm -hmm. went out yesterday. He was checking it out. He caught fish everywhere. We got from Jack Gravel, the redfish all in, in, in Lake Bourne, the Lake St. Catherine and the grass beds and they're fishing top water yesterday evening catching beautiful trout. Uh, Clint DeArmas and all the people scouting have been fishing. They're all excited. Calvin Duvall, another one, the captain over there saying the same thing. And David and Angie, everything is ready. I'll be there this week with Lynn Rollins and Jeff Brenner and the guys from CST, and I'll be fishing there Wednesday. And so next week I'm gonna bring you a first-hand report, see if they're lying to me or not, <laughs> see if they'll do it. See there, good thing I hit that other one, huh? But look, then we go right now, Don, uh, uh, the four is, is freshwater, no, excuse me, Venice. Tuna is still just like it always is. It's unbelievable. Mike Butler said the tuna is coming in all the time right now. Whenever you can get out, tuna was there in the offshore. And you was talking about snapper a while ago, and it was, this came to me. You know, fall is a lot of people hunting and fishing, but if you still want to go offshore fishing, you got, you got, this, you got those tuna. Right now is a good time to go out there and fish the tuna. And uh, you're going to catch two snapper and take a chance of running your season coming up next year, it makes a lot of sense just to hold off and make sure we do it. Uh, now, I'm going to go back to Big Lake and all those people. You saw in the tournament they catch some fish. they still having trouble with the salinity last I mm -hmm. heard. Have you heard anything? From kind of the same situation, although they weren't really affected at all and didn't anticipate any effect from Nate. Uh, but again, that, that fresh water that came from uh, Hurricane Harvey and even earlier in the year, has really kind of slowed them down. But I'm waiting for that to change, too. Zip we should start getting some good they're reports. They're catching fish at Zipcombo yeah. Point. And I just ain't getting the first-hand reports, but mm -hmm. I'm talking to people, oh, I talked to cousin so-and-so, they're catching fish at Zipcombo Point. Still haven't heard from Steve yet. Steve Smith, Captain Steve Smith. Uh, freshwater, freshwater shouldn't have been affected pretty much at all, really. What are you hearing on freshwater? Now, well, coastal, I coastal area, area, yeah. yeah. But, I, I, the spillway, I talked to Jay Suits, and he was... Fishing off his, his wharf over there, where they got mm -hmm. a lot of coontail, where he's throwing frog and everything. He caught one five and a half pounds. But mm -hmm. a lot of people are fishing coontail in the north part of Spillway. I tried to tell Gary Krause and him and that because they've been going south. They've been finding that dread water, that muddy water they're mm -hmm. finding in there. That's not it. But it's in Saul and Pigeon, up in Pigeon. I hear Sackalay reports, and I'm getting bass reports. If you find that duck steed, he was worried about that. You, you remember the old barracuda spoon? With a, with a white skirt on it, you throw that all around them grass beds or in that duck seed or your frog, you can catch fish in the spillway right now. But the best part I would get is coming up around Natchitoches. The famous fishing guy the Sibley Lake, Grant Bailey, the other day he went out by himself. He had 20 crappie. He was catching them on a white 300 crankbait, a little, and he was fishing the piers and he was catching, he caught 20 beautiful crappie. He had nine bass fishing a white and short truce. And by the way, if you want to book a trip, he's guide now. It's Grant Bailey, famous fishing guide. You go look on his website. If you want to fish Sackalay or bass in that area, Cane River, Sibley, Lake Sibley, any of them lakes around there, the Red River, uh, get in touch with Grant. Look. Anything else on freshwater? No, no. I got, I got two notes. One's a happy note, one's a sad note. Well, let's hear them. You want to hear it? We run a little, we run a little picture of somebody, y'all well know any fisherman going down to Fouchon. That was Captain Chris Moran and his wife had their first child the other day. How do you like that name? Caston. Hey, that's very fitting. Caston Moran. I'm impressed by the resemblance between him and his dad, huh? 
Yeah. Look a lot alike. <laughs> with, that hat, with that hat on, it couldn't hardly yeah, tell. That's what you call born to fish. If y'all figured it out, I'm just glad y'all know. But congratulations, Chris. You And that's a tough fisherman. If that boy's anything like his daddy, uh, he, brings a, he brings fish to the dock. And on a sad note, y'all saw that they're killing the police officer in uh, Lafayette. is Michael Middlebrook. Michael was a big outdoor fan. We get a lot of pictures from Galen, McCullen, him and his boy, Lil Mac. They always send us pictures of redfish fishing all in the Lafayette area, Lake Charles area. Uh, big Mac called me and told me that he was very close to this guy, and this guy was a big fan of Paradise, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And it's a sad note for us that the way these police officers, how much we need to support them and do it. There's so many good out there when you get one bad, but this is a big loss to, to all these people out there in the Lafayette area, and uh, he was well loved. He saw it on the news. So. Our prayers and thoughts go out to his family. Uh, those people uh, face danger every day so that we can enjoy what we do. We thank them for it. And we'll see you next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.